Hello everyone, welcome to the series of parallel and transformer videos. So in the previous, in part one, I talked about just kind of a quick overview of a couple of things to keep in mind when you have transformers in parallel. So in part two, I'll talk about, I'll give an example with two transformers in parallel, they have the same impedance, same ratio, same KVA or MVA, then different KVA or MVA. So I'll start with an example where we have both transformers are connected in parallel, but they have the same impedance, same ratio, and same KVA or MVA. So let's just start with a quick kind of, this is more of a conceptual kind of example. So, so you know, we have two transformers here that are identical. 34 kV delta on the high side, 12 kV grounded Y on the low side. Sorry, the same thing here. They're connected in parallel. So on the high side, you know, I'm showing I have a switch here, switch here. And in reality, you might have a, 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 a breaker, you know, that's normally closed to establish the parallel condition. You know, it depends. And you might have two lines or two sources or you might just have one it depends on how much one you, you might you want to spend and whether or not you want the redundancy because if you only have one line here if you lose that line due to a fault you know lightning damage or you know whatever uh, then you're going to lose this substation basically you know and this load has to be served from someone else or otherwise it's not going to be connected to the system you know so then on the low side i'm showing i have a main breaker you know that way if we want to take this transformer out of service we can open this breaker here you know obviously we can open the switch or if we have breakers it depends on the topology you know but if we open the main breaker here and since this tie breaker is cl normally closed we can still serve all feeders you know from transformer one provided they transformer one can do that you know and each feeder has its own dedicated break because if this feeder is faulted to ground for instance we want this breaker to open and keep the other feeders in service otherwise if we don't have this breaker if we just have something like this and this feed is somehow faulted you know then all these breakers here 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 have to they have to open to clear the fault that means you will drop the entire station so this is just a conceptual example you can do the same thing with 138 to 34 kv or you know so now in part one, I kind of showed this sketch here. You know, it's a single line kind of diagram. So, but keep in mind, transformer one and two might be a three phase transformers, but it gets kind of messy and clustery, clustering when you draw delta Y and you connect all the terminals. But to make things simple, I'm just showing single line. And I'm assuming per unit here, that way, that's why you see I'm showing the total current is coming in and it's coming out, you know, coming in to the high side and out of the low side, you know. Then some of it will go through transformer one as I1, some of it will go through transformer two as I2. So if we do cur current division, so the I1 current through transformer one is just Z2 divided by Z1 plus Z2, the impedance is basically times the total current and if i do kcl here at this node here the total current is equal to the sum of i1 and i2 so that's what i'm showing here so i can rewrite this equation here with some assumptions you know as this equation here assuming you know the Rx ratio of the two transforms are kind of are similar, you know. So 
So I1, current transformer through transformer 1, is the KVA or NVA of transformer 1 divided by its impedance. Quantity divided by quantity KVA or NVA of transformer 1 divided by its impedance plus KVA of transformer 2 divided by its impedance times the total current. And I can transform this from current to KVA, basically the same equation except I'm replacing current with KVA. And the reason I'm doing that because current and KVA or NVA are related. So if you have three phase forms, so the line current is the three phase KVA divided by root three times the line to line voltage or KV, you know. So if I assume both sides, you know, you know, here, both sides, I1 and I2, for instance, you know, the voltages are kind of similar, you know, then they're going to be canceling out. So all you will have left is KVA, you know, that that's why we, we went from this to this equation. So KVA through transformer one is equal to KVA of transformer one divided by its impedance entire quantity divided by quantity kva of transformer one divided by its impedance plus kva of transformer two divided by its impedance total quantity times the total kva or the load the load in kva you know or so i'm kind of mixing kva and mva but it's as long as you're consistent it it's okay and you do the same thing for current through transformer 2. You get this equation here. Again, there are some assumptions, you know, but they are valid assumptions that the RX ratios are similar. So now let's do a quick example. So I have an example here where transformer 1, transformer 2 are connected in parallel to serve a load of uh, 20 MVA. So here's transformer one, here's transformer two, that identical basically. So if I apply those equations I derived uh, previously, so again, I'm using MVA because I'm using MVA here. I mean, I could have used KVA, but then I would write 22,000 and 400 kva you know it's easier to just write 22.4 mva and the load is in mva as long as you are consistent it doesn't matter what you do so you see i'm i have mva across so it doesn't matter because if you mix kva and mva you will be off by a thousand by a factor of a thousand which is not good so then i just kind of plug the numbers here you know based on given information and here's the load so i get transformer one will carry 10 mva out of the 20 mva load and that's kind of expected since transformer one and two are identical each transformer will carry 50 percent of the load which is 10 mva so if I, I repeat that equation for transformer two, basically I'll get the same answer. So the key here is since they have the same impedance, as we will see in other examples where impedance, impedance is different, the loading will be different. So now, so we have, we still have the same impedance, same ratio, but the only thing that's different is different KVA or MVA. So again, so this time transformer one is 45 MVA. It has a impedance of 7.5%. Transformer two, 56 MVA, same impedance. So they're connected in parallel to serve a load of 50 MVA. So note, I am not exceeding the total combined capacity of the transformer one and two, you know, because one transformer one and two, they have a total capacity of 101 MVA. So if I, you know, go through that equation, I get transformer one will carry 22.28 MVA, which is still less than 45 MVA. 
because you don't want to exceed the rating of the transform. That's something you have to keep in mind. So we're well, good. So if I do the same thing for transformer 2, I will get 27.72 MVA, which is less than its rating, which is 56 MVA, so which is good. So, you know, each transformer is carrying, so transformer 1 and 2, they are carrying the total load without exceeding the rating of each transformer because you don't want to overload any of the transformers or both. And really what kind of helps here is, so the load is shared based on each transformer's rating, you know, since the impedances are equal. And in the follow, the upcoming examples or in the videos, you know, that I will share, we will see that when you have different impedances, uh, some transformers could be overloaded in some cases. Thank you and be in the lookout for the next videos. Thank you. Have a great day.